first Spanish speaker and also as a Spanish CIO, I want to welcome you to Madrid and also to this event. I hope it will be useful for everybody. We have several days to exchange ideas and knowledge on a wide range of up-to-date topics as business transformation, risks, trusted technologies, cloud, big data, the Internet of Things, and so on. As every aspect of today's organization becomes increasingly digital in their nature, businesses can no longer afford to architect merely for information systems without enough knowledge of all, of all the uh, possibilities the new technologies can provide. Today's digital businesses consist of a complex interconnected web that, uh, that expands the entire organization to create a full, a full ecosystem of internal departments and stakeholders, as well as external customers, partners, and even system systems comprised of other machines and services. In this context, and with these I initial ideas, it is a great honor and a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you today on a topic I have become very passionate about, the reform of the Spanish public administration based on ICT technologies. <coughs> there is a broad agreement that governments must adapt to meet the demands of the 21st century. In the last 30 years, most of OECD countries have implemented measures to reform their public administrations. Some of these reforms form part of a broad overall plans, while others focus on specific issues. In general, however, all stem from the need to curb the growth of spending as part of a process of fiscal consolidation. Although it is increasingly the case that the reforms are aimed at achieving a sweeping transformation of public sector government to improve its effectiveness, quality, and efficiency, and thus better respond to the nation's requirements. In terms of public expenditure in the European Union, government spending represents half of the entire economy. If one of the strategic variables of economic development is national competitiveness, an organization that accounts for 50% of GDP must be competitive. Evidently, government plays a major role in every modern society, and the welfare state is one of the pillars of the social system of European economies. Public services must be provided with maximum efficiency and quality. There is nothing more antisocial than government inefficiency because public goods and services are paid for with the taxes raised from the whole population. Consequently, the reform of government arises from the need to improve its effi efficiency. In view, in view of this priority goal, a concept that is increasingly accepted in OECD countries is that of open government, according to which government administration should be based on the values of transparency, accessibility, and responsiveness to new ideas on demands. Thus, the administration should be at the service of the country's citizens. In short, reforms should be made, not just to improve government efficiency, but also to change the focus of the administration. Innovations such as e-governments seek not only to do the same bureaucratic procedures online, but also to use the internet pro to provide new and necessary public services. The government of Spain, quite conscious about the necessity to reform the public administration to achieve more efficiency, openness, and promote competitiveness, created a, speci a special commission named CORA to carry out what is the biggest audit in the public sector in Spain. This commission for the reform of the public administrations 
comprised four subcommissions. Two of them took ICT as the basis to carry out most of their proposals. One of them was focused on administrative simplification. Its purpose was reviewing the bureaucratic barriers of the administrative procedures with a view to simplification that benefits citizens. Particular attention was given to the administrative procedures to start up businesses. The other one was the Subcommission for Common Services and Resources. The objective of this subcommission was to centralize management processes that could be unified or coordinated to maximize public resources. For this task, it was indispensable to study successful models implemented in Spanish business holdings that provided information and collaboration. Both, sub sub both commissions submit progress reports periodically at commission plenary sessions. The report issued by the Commission to Reform the Public Administrations, CORA, recognized that key role, the key role of ICT as 60% of the proposed measures include new technology as a basis for the reform. This is a very important milestone for the Spanish public administration as the government recognized the great importance of ICT for modernization of the public sector in all the domains of its responsibility. Regarding the governance and organization of ICT in the Spanish public administration, the CORA report revealed the existence of a great degree of autonomy in the functioning of the ICT in the central public sector. This situation led to a high degree of autonomy in the budgeting of funds and ICT resources. ICT units take the spending and investment decisions, which have led to a high dispersion of resources and efforts in ICT. In particular, we have to face a dispersion of ICT decision making throughout different organizations. Second, different contracting criteria and multiple, multiple approving authorities with barely ICT coordination. So far, nearly all ministerial coordination units have focused on the administrative processing of ICT procurement and not on, not on the study of the real use of ICT in the departments, nor their deficiencies necessities or potential improvement that ICT could bring. Third, insufficient digital driven patterns with various degrees of lack of coordination amongst administrative and ICT units. Nearly all ministerial coordination units have focused on bureaucracy after decision making and such decisions are made in, a fr in fragmentary contexts. Without a, general, without a general overview of the availability of resources and ICT opportunities in the overall administration. And closely linked, therefore, the, avail the availability of credit instead of taking into account an objective assessment of necessities and priorities. Fourth, and the use of some ICT infrastructures and services. And finally, redundancies of ICT infrastructures and services at the same time. And just some figures about ICT in the state public services, which is my responsibility, not regions uh, nor municipal municipalities. Over 160 ICT units, over 14,000 employees under these units, over 260 data centers with over 2,000 20,000 square meters. In order to correct these weaknesses, the Commission proposed a redesign of the ICT, the ICT governance and organization in the Spanish Central Administration. In this context, the Spanish government wished to establish ICT as the pillar of the pursue and achieve the improvement of public services and it created the position of the Information and Communication Technologies direc Director for the Spanish Public Service, Spanish Government CIO. 
The Spanish CIO depends on both ministries, the Ministry of Finance and Public Administration and the Ministry of Presidency, but shows the great political backup to this position. When in October 2013, I accepted the challenge of being the first Spanish CIO, it was very clear to me the enormous and very complex work that, it, that I would have to face. And now I know I was right. Now I understand that the complexity is not so much a consequence of technolo technological challenge, but rather the result of the creation of the crossover structures between the various divisions of the Spanish public services, which, are, which have a long tradition of fragmented structures and ICT units with a great autonomy of decision making. In spite of these difficulties, I can assure you it is a still a great adventure. Since I was appointed, we have carried out several changes in the ICT governance model within the central administration. In our, in our past governance structures, we had the body called the Higher Council of Electronic Government, certainly performing a valuable coordination work, but with a lack of real executive powers. Its guidelines and uh, recommendations involve no real obligation to comply them. In the new governance scheme, the responsibility for creating the ICT strategy of the general state administration lies with the CIO who has the role to design it together with the ICT strategic committee. This committee can meet in a plenary session headed by the Minister, Minister of Finance and Public Administration, comprising the undersecretaries of the different ministries and the secretaries of a state of public administration, telecommunications and information society, and social security. The ICT strategic committee can meet in a more operative session through its steering committee, headed by the CIO, to serve the plenary as an instrument to guarantee an effective and agile implementation of the ICT strategy. Furthermore, the CIO is assisted by the management committee for ICTs, a support body comprising the domain CIOs for every department. Last but not least, in each ministry, there will be a ministerial committee for digital administration responsible for the coordination and promotion of the digital services within its domain. But in addition to reform the organization, we, know we now have a new governance model based on five pillars. First, a common ICT strategy approved by the government, which has to be accomplished by all ICT units. Second, increasingly central control. The new model intends to centralize ICT decision making. This will do it gradually through a new tool, a tool that we, we have called the shared services statement that has to be adopted by the ICT strategic committee plenary session. Third, mandatory use of shared services. Fourth, promote innovation and digital transformation. And fifth, cost cutting through centralized control of ICT, ICT procurement to align, to align it with the ICT uh, policies, to aggregate and to plan all the needs of the government as a unique customer facing suppliers. As still, I'm leading now in a department responsible for consolidating and developing a catalog of, of horizontal services, including common building blocks for the provision of common services to the administration as a, as a whole, as well as streamlining the, the development of infrastructures and domain specific services. This model will achieve economies of uh, scale by consolidating infrastructures, services, and procurement. Moreover, this
this structures this structure allows more effective management of ICT in the general state administration through the consolidation of infrastructures and common services data processing centers internal communication networks and voice and data communication and the integration of ICT at the highest level in all developments regulatory and otherwise equally it will help to establish and adopt a comprehensive ICT strategy throughout the general state administration organizing ICT in the general state administration will also require the consideration of a redesign of the ICT personal structures of departments and the definition of those functions to be performed by general state administration personnel and which ones must be supported by external companies. Regarding this issue, a great value and a strength of, a of the Spanish central administration is the existence of a corps of civil servants specialized in ICT management who possesses who possess a high level of technical training and knowledge of the administration. But not everything can be organization and governance. Let's talk about concrete measures and projects adopted so far in the new organization. A very important question to ask me in this moment is what we have achieved until now. A cornerstone of our strategy is the consolidation of common assets and services in information technology and, and communication to avoid duplication and make them more efficient. In this regard, I would like to highlight three of the most ambitious projects that have started since the Directorate of ICT was created. First, the consolidation of the telecommunications networks in the central administration. This project, in its first phase of two, is going to say is going uh, to provide savings up to 125 million euros, over 40 percent. But benefits go far beyond the savings. Before the project, we could find that in the same building there was different communications line, because they belonged to different ministries, what was extremely ineffic inefficient. Now we will only have one telecommunication infrastructure per building. Moreover, the capacity to manage, to manage the telecommunication within the administration has been reduced considerably, as now we will have to manage just one contract instead of 200. Second, the consolidation of more than 260 data center centers existing in the central administration right now, with the goal of reducing them by 95%. We, went, we want less than 20 data centers in, in the state general administration. Only the energy savings will be very important in addition to those, the firefighting system, buildings, physical security, and other facility of data centers. In third place, in the framework of the uh, national cybersecurity strategy, we are also carrying out a project to standardize and strengthen security through a shared platform that protects the central administration ICT systems with two great advantages, more securities and fewer costs. And this will be possible thanks to the consolidation of communications with one, with one network that will only have two shared internet accesses points instead of hundreds. Also, further progress is needed in the, standard, in the standardis standardization of services and internal processes in the administration so that the organizational complexity of it is not a barrier in the relationship with citizens. In addition, I am, I am particularly proud of the high level of cooperation shown by the, by the various ministries, which has allowed us to, ins to initiate 
projects as the clave project which provides to all the administrative to all the administrative units a unique I identification system for citizens much simpler than the previous system for identification with this new identification service citizens can access digital public services without having to remember any password specifically since it start up in November 2014 the survey has been used by more than 600,000 people accessing two electronic public services now is the time to talk about the future and our roadmap to advance in the digital transformation of the Spanish public administration in Spain 96.1% of citizens have mobile phones. 53.7% use smartphones or small tablets. 50% use social networks and 45% use online banking. For young people, these percentages rise considerably, reaching 90% of young people with social network profiles and 53.6% using online banking. In the following years, we will see how these numbers increase dramatically. In the case of companies from multinational to small or medium enterprises, they increasingly depend more on, in, on an intelligent use of information technology, which is now an important critical factor for the continuity, continuity of the businesses. Given this scenario, the administration has to position itself at the forefront in the usage of new technologies to guide the Spanish society and economy. It must be able to adapt to new demands in an agile way, provide information and digital services anytime, anywhere, and most convenient way for citizens and public employees as well as enabling communica communication channels for citizens to participate in the definition and the design of public services, so that they are better suited, suited to their real needs. In order to achieve all the same, it is necessary to pursue the transformation and become a digital administration. We have an ICT strategy for the public sector digital transformation about to be approved by the Council of Ministries, Ministers. Our vision in the strategy is that for the 2020, the Spanish administration has to be digital so that information technology and communications are so integrated into the organization that citizens and businesses prefer to relate to the administration digitally, digitally as, the most, as the most simple and intuitive way to do it. There is a smooth collaboration with the stakeholders to provide a comprehensive service to the citizen, continuous innovation and transparency of administrative processes that generate in internal efficiencies and increase productivity in public employees. To undertake this transformation, we must remember the starting point, law 11 uh, 2007 gave us a big burst to the modernization of the Spanish administration to establish the right of citizens to interact inter electronically with the administration. Such a promise assumed the corresponding obligation for the administration to introduce electronic media at different stages of administrative procedures that involve interaction with citizens. Thanks to the effort made at present, Spain is at the top of the European Union in availability of public services online. According to the studies of the uh, European Commission and the U United Nations. Although the external interface, interface of public services has been digitized for the most part, Internal processing by the administration has not evolved in the same way. Digi 
digital administration requires requires also a comprehensive redesign of processes and services as well as reviewing existing organizational approaches which involves not be realizable without corresponding cultural change also it is necessary to refine and improve digital public services to suit the needs of a changing environment. To do this, we must place the end user in the central focus of the design of public services. For, the process, for this process of digital transformation, it is necessary the, participa the participation of decision makers at the high le highest level. Furthermore, the stakeholders within the public and private sectors are key for it to success. Only if we all work together, we will succeed together. Thank you for your attention. Now I will, happy, will be happy to answer any question about the process of transformation of any of, any of ICT consolidation measures. very interesting and insightful look into what you're trying to achieve in the Spanish government now and congratulations on your role. The first Spanish CIO. That's Thank you. That's a challenge, isn't it? I see. So one of the questions, we've we got some questions from the audience and uh, I'll be asking them, but it's not my question, it's, it, it's theirs. So one of the questions, obviously with this audience, is have you used any formal methods for enterprise architecture? Uh, in this process? Any form of process? For enterprise architecture? Yes. Yes. Uh, we, 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 have, uh, we have studied uh, different countries' models and we have studied uh, different um, multinational models, Spanish multinational models. And then we, we had to adapt it, uh, these uh, experiences to our uh, particular case. Uh, we, we have seen that um, different countries have different models. Um, we, we have seen from, from model that the, the, CIO, the CIO is a single prescriptor to another model in the, in the other stream that the CIO is a manager of the C, uh, ICT, for example, in, in some region in Spain, uh, in Galicia. Um, in this, uh, between uh, both streams, um, we have found uh, models in which uh, all the ICT has been uh, uh, externalized and uh, the, the administration has, uh, has kept only uh, a few uh, personal, few people to manage, to manage all of these uh, externalized projects. In our case, in our case um, as I have said, the contest was that we have a lot of, a lot of people specialized in ICT, so we have to find a model where uh, we take advantage of these uh, of these people so uh, we we have to combine uh, to externalize the operations uh, with the internal management of the higher level activities thank you yes um, as i said in my opening there are many governments that have taken advantage of uh, formal methods of enterprise architecture and uh, the standards of this organization in particular. I'd welcome the opportunity to come and talk to you more about those, if that's possible. Thank you. So a lot of the savings uh, that you're going to achieve uh, would inevitably involve people. Um, how difficult is, um, is that in the environment of the EU in general, in Spain in particular? Uh, sorry? How, how do you achieve savings of people? Um, given the labor laws in, in, in Europe? Uh, I'm not sure I am understanding. Saving of people... I, of in your savings that you yes. will make, yes. there will inevitably be some people whose jobs are replaced. Okay. Yes, thank you.
to, to reform the administration uh, is to uh, reassign, reassign the people to uh, those activities uh, to, uh, that give more value uh, to, the, uh, to the department they, 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 they are uh, working for. Uh, for example, in the case of the telecommunication, we had over 200 people um, spread around the, the units uh, dedicated to, um, to support uh, communications. After centralize this, um, this service, uh, we have got not only savings, as I, I have said, we have got uh, over 40% savings uh, compared to what we were uh, spending, uh, even we, we, we are going to give the service uh, with around 20 people. Uh, we are dividing by 10 the, the, the people we need to give this service. Um, the, the proposal of CORA was to reassign these people uh, to this new service uh, provider unit, and the rest people has has to be have to be dedicated to another uh, mission, to another work, looking for giving more value to the uh, organization. Thank you. That's um, yeah. That that's what I would have expected. So, the next question is: How do you measure progress as you move forward? You've got a, all of these different. How do you measure progress on your journey? Okay. Um, uh, to measure the, the, the progress in the administration, uh, as I was speaking with Juan before, uh, is, is, is more difficult than in a, than in a company uh, uh, because the, the, time, the times are uh, slower than in a company. All the decisions that uh, uh, that look look for um, to establish a crossover um, structure are are very difficult. Um, in fact, uh, in the governance model, um, we don't have a a real a real uh, or an organic dependency of these units uh, from the CIO. We have a functional dependency uh, from the CIO. So um, um, every unit, every unit has uh, have its own uh, ERP or, uh, of uh, IT governance mm -hmm. um, to to implant a crossover a crossover IT um, IT governance uh, tool is being a very hard work. Uh, by the moment, we are working uh, with um, uh, uh, asking data and consolidating data, but we, we cannot extract the data of uh, how we are, we are advancing from the system mm -hmm. by the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working in implanting this IT tool to, 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 to get a vision, an integral vision of all our capacities and uh, and how efficient are every every unit. Yes, thank you. Many of our organisations, government and uh, companies, will share the pain of how difficult that is. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, in government, it has a, an added dimension that it's mm -hmm. more difficult uh, to break this down. So, um, I think I'd like to thank you for sharing with us and having such an insightful um, discussion with us. Um, and uh, I'm, I would like to speak to you at some further stage on, on enterprise architecture and some of the standards that, that may help in the, in the moving towards your vision of 2020. So for the time being, thank you very much. Thank you.